Nuts. Nuts on axles, don't you say them? It just means there's that one extra tool that you have to carry around with you. They're just a bit of a inconvenience now, aren't they? Um, but something you can do to get rid of them, um, we can actually upgrade them to a modern quick release. And it's pretty, pretty easy to do. Um, so, let's get working. Let's get this wheel off. So what I'm going to do is replace the axle that's on the bike already with this axle. Um, it's just a standard hollow quick release axle. Um, the first thing you want to do is measure what size you need. Um, the length of the quick release axle is going to be determined by the dropouts. Um, so your overlock nut diameter. Overlock diameter? Overlock nut dimension. Um, the bolt, the bolted axle, um, is going to be obviously be a lot longer because it's going to come out of each side of the dropouts to put the nut on. The quick release doesn't have to be that long. It's only going to be as wide as your dropouts. So this is a 130. So I've got a 130mm dropout and then I want to add about 5mm for each side. Um, you can get away with less. So for this I'm going to, I've ordered a 140mm axle, which is here already. So the 140mm will give me enough clearance in there. Um, the other dimension you need, which is pretty important, is the diameter of the axle. Um, the rear on this bike is uh, a 10mm, I believe, um, and the front is a 9mm. So you can just check that on your old axle, and um, just measure the, measure the old axle, where is it? Yeah, so we've got a 9.6 there, so it's a, just a 10mm axle. Okay, so once you've got the uh, wheel off the bike, uh, the first step we're going to want to do is to remove the gearing on the back. Um, depending on the age of your bike and the make of the bike, it might be a cassette. Um, this one is a freewheel, although it looks like it's got a cassette lock ring on it, which is kind of odd. But they come in all different shapes and uh, sizes, the lock rings. This one uses the Park FR 5.2, which is just going to slot in there once I've took some of these washers off. But there are many more, as demonstrated here. So we've got different ones to choose from, two pins, four pins. Um, I think that's actually bottom bracket, that's bottom bracket. These are both three wheel removal tools and lock ring removals. Um, so I need to get that off first. What I'm going to do is instead of trying to put that in there and hold the wheel and hold this, this is C-solid, like that cassette is C-solid. Um, I'm going to put this tool in my vise and then put the uh, and slide the cassette onto the tool and use the wheel as the leverage rather than trying to use that. So, so I've got the tool clamped into the vise. I've got the lock nuts and washer off the end of the axle. That should be enough to drop it onto the tool. Um, now I'm just going to drop the wheel on and try and turn the wheel to break that seal, it's going to be tough. This hasn't been off for years. Okay, it's dropped on. How am I looking?
Okay, it's a lock ring. The lock ring's come undone. Took out the axle um, and literally just took off this side, and it had this uh, washer ram first. No, sorry, the cone washer on first, the cone nut, then this seal with a little washer in the middle, and the lock nut on top. That is filthy in there, which you can't see at the moment, luckily. Um, so yeah, what I've got to do next is refit the axle, uh, fit the new axle even. Um, here's what was right. Here is old versus new. Um, this stack is for the non-drive side, and then obviously the stuff that I've got over the other side is for the drive side. What I've got to make sure. What I've got to do now is um, make sure I put the same amount of height here as there is on this one. Um, and by that, I need to put you in the sand for a second. I need to get um, if this is a little pointer. If this is where the bearings are going to sit, just here. I'm going to measure from this lip to the edge of the lock nut, which then should give me the same height. So if I put it on that lip, measure to the edge, I'm getting pretty much about 26mm. So there you go, it's roughly 26mm. On the new axle, I've already spaced it at 5mm from the end. So I've got the 5mm which will overhang and sit in the dropouts. So that should be on the end. But what I've got here is more like 28mm, 27.8. Yeah, more like 28mm, so I'm 2mm over on that distance. Um, I can't really make this lock look smaller. I can't really make the cone look smaller. So what I'm going to do is just try and find a different size uh, washer in the middle. So I need to take off, let's take this off. Okay, so the old one here is 14mm. I've managed to go through my spares and find two of these together, which equate to 11.8, so it's 0.2 of a mil out, which will be fine. Unfortunately, they have it in a diameter of 9.5 when the axle is, where is it? Well, it's a 10mm axle, so it's a 9.6. So they're a bit tight, in fact, they won't go on. So what I'm going to do is just try and uh, widen the inner, inner diameter of these slightly, and then I'll put it all together on this side. Just gonna set my lock nut back on there. I'm gonna set that distance to five mil from the end, um, and then just wind this up and pinch it tight, and that should be that side set. Then what I've got to do is do the other side. And now the other side is made up of a lock nut, a cone nut, and this spacer here 
and the space we've got to go over the top of that to form the seal. So I'm gonna see if I can reuse that, maybe change the the cone nut because it might be worn. I'll clean it up. Uh, but I've got to make sure I set the same distance on the other side as well, obviously. Okay, let's get this ex axle fitted. Um, okay, the non drive side. What I need to do first is get my grease. Okay, so I've just put some grease in there. Um, and then what came out were. Five, seven, eight. Quarter inch. So it uses quarter inch bearings. So I'm just going to put them in there. Okay, eight quarter inch bearings in there. Like so. Then we need the dust dust cap. That's gonna sit in there, so we need my little hammer. Just lightly tap that into place. And then the new axle can go through. Okay. So that should have the same clearance as the other side as the old axle. Then we're gonna flip it over and do the other side. So the drive side. Uh, first, obviously grease. Then I need eight quarter inch bearings. I'm going to use my tweezers to put these ones in because they're a bit awkward. And now I've got the old stack here or the new stack. Um, they're very, very similar heights. This is slightly taller than the new stack. And it has a obviously a better bearing surface. The old stack just has the separate washer rather than incorporate it into the cone nut. But the cone is a bit worn, so I'm gonna go with the new set. But first, actually no, I'll slip that on after. So this side actually has um, this washer, this seal, and it will literally just press fit over the top. Um, that, that's all it is. Uh, so that will go over the top, and then when you put the cassette over the top, again, this will go on top, and it will seal over the top of that. So it will stop any dirt and debris going in. But I just want to clean this up a bit. Okay, it's finally clean. So that seal will literally just sit in there on top. What I want to do now is just fit this lock nut. Um, it's a bit taller so I haven't got as much clearance there. But it'll be alright. Um, but I just want to set the tension on this. So you've got your comb washer. That's tight down, so you want to back it up a bit first. About a quarter of a turn, I guess. Let's pinch it tight. And you're literally just going to run it in your hands. Take it out the vise, run it in the hands. Uh, and you want to see if there's any play, sort of laterally in it, see if it spins freely. You'll be able to feel if, feel if there's any resistance. If there is, just back it up a bit. It's definitely too tight there. So it's 
too tight, so just back the cone up a bit. Try again. Okay. Safe for me. So I've just spun it in my hands. There's no there's no lateral movement in the axle, so when you're holding it you'll be able to feel if there's any wobble by just grabbing each side of the rim and it spins freely you'll be able to feel again if there's any rumbling uh, any roughness in the axle so anything left to do now apart from obviously change the tyres and tidy the wheel up is just to check it fits there we go, quick release quick release axle fitted so I hope this video was uh, useful to someone I'm going to do the front wheel now because that's still got nuts on I hope this video was useful. Hope you enjoyed watching it. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Um, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I'll catch you in the next one. Because there's plenty more on this bike to go over. Plenty more. It's in a state. But yeah, see you in the next one.